Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a um, My PS3 JRPG collection. So this is going to show all, well, most of, if not almost all, of the RPGs, specifically Japanese role-playing games that came out for the PlayStation 3 generation. Uh, I think now is a good time. There's probably only a handful of games that will continue to come out for PS3 before we finally make that transition to PS4. Uh, PS4 has been out for almost a year now. Um, but there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, RPGs for it, which is kind of similar to how the PS3 was when it first came out. It wasn't until probably it had been out for maybe like three years uh, where we finally started seeing uh, games for it that were must-have titles that would actually uh, motivate people to actually go out and get the system. So I'm going to go over my collection. This is what I have since, oh, since probably the PS3 came out way back in late 2006 so this is what I have um, and I'll also point out which developer or publishers and developers were the most uh, prominent players here for releasing the PS3 JRPG titles um, so we're not going to go in any particular order in terms of chronological order I'm just going to start off with what I have over here so this is Dragon's Crown from Atlas actually I believe it was published and developed by Atlas. I don't see any other. Um, so as far as I know, Atlas released this game, Dragon's Crown, last year. It also came out for the Vita. Um, and it was a pretty good game. I think it supports cross-save. Um, but I don't have the Vita edition. So Dragon's Crown from Atlas. So that's a notable one. Another notable one, which I wouldn't really consider it as an RPG. Um, it's more of a puzzle game. And it's a very story-based game. was Catherine. That was also published by Atlas. I have that, but I don't have it on this list since I don't really consider it a, a traditional role-playing game. Uh, moving on, we have the games that were made by Axis. Axis Games published in the West, Record of Agris War Zero, as well as the original Record of Agris War, but that one did not see a um, a Blu-ray release, so that one's only like a downloadable, downloadable one, although I believe um, uh, the European Union did get a, um, a hard copy of that. Uh, but... Record of Agress War 2, the sequel to the original, um, did get a hard copy. Actually, now that I think about it, Record of Agress War did get a hard copy for Xbox 360, just not for the PS3. Um, but the RPG does exist, is, is available um, on PSN. So there was three um, Agress War games. There might actually be a fourth one, I'm not sure. So that that's another one. But th these are more of like a... Um, SR, SRPG, so strategy role-playing game. So you've got the grid, you know, the traditional grid, and you move your character around, and then it's, they take their actions, and then it's the enemy's turn to make their moves. Uh, and then Rune Factory from Natsume, I believe. Uh, yeah, they were the developer and publisher. So Rune Factory, I've never actually played this yet. It's on the backlog, but I do have it. So that's just another title out there. Um, and then here is what I consider a hidden gem. This one was published by Sega. This is Valkyria Chronicles. Notice the uh, old school Spider-Man Spider -Man font for PlayStation 3. This game came out back in uh, fall 2008. So it's a pretty old school game now. Uh, and in my opinion, it is still one of the best uh, JRPGs. It's also a little bit like a strategy action strategy style. It's a very interesting and unique game. There isn't a whole lot like this, so I definitely recommend this if you are into JRPGs and you want if you want uh, good, genuine uh, role-playing games that in my opinion are classics and stand the test of time. Uh, this one is definitely one of them that defines the PS3 console. Um, so Valkyria Chronicles, excellent game. Old school game and also a very good game. Uh, the publisher on that one was Sega. And I think they were also the developer. And another published by Sega game is Resonance of Fate. This game is a hit or miss. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Um, I never actually got too into it. I could. The battle system is very complicated. Um, so it's one of those complicated games. But once you pick it up, it's just a real fun game to play. So Resonance of Fate, that's another one. And then probably one of the original, one of the first JRPGs uh, available for PS3. Uh, this one came out back in 2007. So folklore, you can see the old school um, box art design. 
Uh, Folklore is actually, this is a first party game. Sony was actually the publisher. So this was one of their early efforts to try to uh, push, put RPGs on their new console at the time. Uh, PS2 dominated the scene with all the Persona games, all the Final Fantasy games. Um, so this was an attempt to try to show that, yeah, they do have JRPGs. Um, and then with 2010, I think 2009, 2010, somewhere around there, that was when the PS, that's when the JRPGs really started to roll out. So next we have uh, White Knight Chronicles. Uh, this game came out in early 2010, uh, published by Sony, but the developer was level 5. Um, and it did see a sequel that came out like a little over a year, probably a year and a half later, White Knight Chronicles 2, which was much improved. It actually included the entire story of the first game on the disc. Um, and the multiplayer was like, this was actually a pretty interesting game at the time because it had like MMO elements or at least like dungeon crawler elements, kind of like Dragon's Crown where you could play online uh, with, with people. Um, and it had, a fur it had a single player component. It was a very unique game. Um, Battle System was a little bit clunky. It was much improved in White Knight Chronicles 2. Um, unfortunately, the online component doesn't exist anymore. They turned the ser they shut the servers off, so which is a really big bummer because uh, if this game was a little bit more popular, it, it could have probably kept them up. But overall, it was a pretty memorable game. So those were the, uh, I guess, the more um, less known games in terms of the developers. They didn't develop too many JRPGs. So next we're going to get into the ones that are more uh, mainstream, more well-known. Um, so from Namco, Bandai, Eternal Sonata. I think originally this was on the 360, but it did get a PS3 release. So And it was also one of the um, old school. So this was one of the earlier RPGs available for the console. So Eternal Sonata, very good game. A very weird game. I mean, it looks childish just by looking at it, but it's actually pretty deep. It's a very, very interesting concept with the story and the characters. And then now, obviously, we have the classic Tales series games from Namco. Um, so, Tales of Graces F. This was a port from originally released on the Wii. So, this came out 2012. And then we saw Tales of Exilia. Or Zilia. Um, and, of course, Tales of Exilia 2, which I did an unboxing on recently. Uh, this one, I haven't played it yet. Um, so, but I'm just showing that Namco did release uh, quite a handful of genuine RPGs. I mean, some people probably don't like the Tail series, but I still think it's a pretty good series overall. So, and then Eternal Sonata was a very good game. So, the Tails games from Namco. And then from software. Uh, Enchanted Arms, this game was also released on 360 originally, and then it did get ported to PS3. Uh, published by Ubisoft in the West, but the developer was actually uh, From Software, and From Software is very well known for uh, the Dark Souls series. Uh, Dark Souls really took off in the West. Uh, so did Demon Souls, uh, as you can see up there, I have Demon Souls. Um, but Enchanted Arms was a very um, unique RPG game, but it wasn't a very good one. So this one was not one of the best. Like, it, I would say back then when this game came out, this was a game that kind of showed people that the PS3... It put a negative um, image that the PS3, it's like, oh, it, it's nothing compared to PS2. It wasn't until later on that, like, the better RPGs came out. And one of them being Demon Souls, uh, released in 2009. This is an excellent game. This is probably my favorite PS3 game, period. Um, it's just a classic, it's a PS3 exclusive, and it was published by Atlas, developed by From Software. Um, it's because of the success of Demon Souls that they released uh, Dark Souls about two years later, a 2011 release. This one was argued by many as the best RPG uh, of that console generation. This was also released on Xbox 360. So Dark Souls, another very excellent game by From Software published by Bandai, and then the sequel, Dark Souls 2, which came out earlier this year. Um, I still haven't finished it, uh, but I'm a big fan of the Souls games, so I'll definitely finish that. I have platinumed Demon Souls and Dark Souls, and I do plan to platinum Dark Souls 2. So those were From Software's contributions. Uh, next we have Square Enix. Square Enix is probably one of the most popular 
So Dragon Guard 3 came out earlier this year. It came out last year in Japan. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what genre this game falls into. Uh, but I would say, if anything, it's kind of like an action RPG. It's very hack and slash, though. Um, but it is all very character-driven and story-driven, so I do uh, lump it with the RPGs. So Dragon Guard 3, very interesting game. Uh, and then probably an even better game, Nier. Same developer. The developer f for uh, the Dragon Guard series, I, for I forget the name... Uh, let me see if it's on here, if it's on here. I forget who, what his name is, but it's... He is known for the Guard series from the PS2 days. So if you're familiar with Guard, you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, they developed Nier, and in my opinion, Nier is superior to Guard 3, unfortunately. But Nier is just an excellent game. Uh, it's, I would consider it just like Valkyria Chronicles... I would consider it another hidden gem. So this and, and Demon Souls. These are, in my opinion, unless, I guess, if you can't stand very challenging games, then I guess you don't have to get Demon Souls. But I just think it's such an excellent game. Um, it's it's the Ocarina of the PS3 generation. I'll just put it that way. And then Nier is the Kingdom Hearts of the PS3 era. Uh, with a more mature uh, theme. So, near very good. Highly recommended. Uh, and then next, Star Ocean The Last Hope. This was originally on 360. It came out yeah, for PS3 International Edition early 2010. Uh, just a Star Ocean game. Trice was a developer published by Square Enix. Uh, it's similar to the Tales of games. Same style, but it's more archaic. And I actually prefer the Tales games because the Tales are more... Uh, forward thinking in terms of their mechanics and their design. Star Ocean tends to stick with the old school, very archaic style, like very few save points. You can go for like two hours without finding uh, a save point. So it's more challenging in that regard, but it's more tedious to play. But it's still pretty good, very character driven game. Uh, next, Final Fantasy 13, big title. Um, some people hate this game, I don't understand why. Uh, it got a lot of mixed reviews, but I think it was still a pretty solid Final Fantasy title. Um, it wasn't as good as, say, Final Fantasy X, um, but it's still, it's not terrible. Like, I, I played it to completion, uh, which cannot be said, because these two games came out around the same time, like, they're about a month apart. Um, I started this one, then 13 came out, I got 13, and I played 13 all the way to the end. This one I never picked up for, like, two years later, then I finally got around to finishing it. So, 13, very good. Um, but then a year later, they got 13.2. For some reason, the collector's edition didn't have the original uh, disc packaging, so I just have the whole collector's edition box here. 13.2, in my opinion, is one of the top 10, uh, possibly even top 5 best uh, JRPGs of the PS3 era. 13.2 is just very good. I would consider it, it is very similar to Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. So that if you like those games, you will definitely like this game. And then Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII came out this year. Um, very uh, different style. It took a different approach to this game. Um, but it's a pretty solid contender. And then Kingdom Hearts got a remake, HD remake. So I do count it as a, P a JRPG for PS3. And so did Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X is my favorite JRPG of all time. So I'm very glad that they, it did get a remake for PS3. So those are the Square Enix games. So you can see they did make quite a few for the PS3 generation. Um, some people tend to, I don't know why, they keep thinking that PS2 had all the RPGs. As you can see here, that's not exactly the case. Uh, next we are going to go over the NIS or the NISA games. and NIS America. So they did a whole lot actually. Um, and these are more very uh, Japanese style RPGs. They're very uh, grind heavy and um, you can see the anime influence in them. So this one's Cross Edge. This was the first one that came out. You can tell it's an older game because it has the old style design. Followed by Cross Edge there was Trinity Universe. 
Trinity Universe switched from the 2D sprites that they were using here to the 3D. They went 3D with Trinity Universe, um, and it was a pretty good game. It had the whole, like, two, pick the story of, from two different characters. You could choose one to play the story. It's kind of like um, what they did with Tales of Exilia in the Tales series. And then Hybrid Dimension Neptunia came out, I think, like, half a year later from this. And it was very similar to Trinity Universe, although um, you could tell that the production values on this were lower than Trinity Universe. So it actually seemed like a downgrade going from Trinity Universe to Neptunia. Um, but it had a very unique style. It was about the console wars. Each one of these characters were actually representing a personification of a video game console. So a very unique game, and it was very successful, strangely enough. So they released a sequel about the portable consoles. So Neptunia Mark II came out a year later. And then a year after that, there was uh, Hybrid Dimension Neptunia Victory, which was, in my opinion, this one's the best one out of the three. So the interesting thing about the Neptunia series, they got better with each iteration um, to the point where I would say... Mark II was on par with Trinity Universe, maybe a little bit better in quality, and then Victory was even better than both of them. So, if you want to get one of these, I recommend Victory. It's the best one. Uh, and then, this game isn't out yet. This game is coming out uh, later this year, but I have the Japanese version. So, Fairy Fencer F. Fairy Fencer F is, a, is their latest uh, PS3 JRPG from NIS. A uh, very similar style to... Hybrid Dimension, same artist. And then now we have the Atelier series, which are also published by NIS. So these are kind of like the Tales of, where they're, there's like multiple iterations of them, but they're different every single time. Um, unlike the Tales of games, with the exception of Zillia, they reuse some of the characters in these. So Atelier Rorona was the first one. Then Atelier Totori was kind of like a sequel after that, but the main character is different. Uh, and then Atelier Meruru, which was better than the other two. Then Atelier Ayesha. And I haven't played this one yet. That's why it still has the plastic seal. Um, but as far as I know, the story in this one's different. Like, it doesn't have... It doesn't recycle the same cast of characters that the, these three have. So you can view these as a trilogy. I don't know if this one is related. It might be. But I think the cast is completely different. Uh, and then the latest one that came out earlier this year, Atelier, uh, Eska, Esha, and Logi. Uh, this one is very much a throwback to the PS2 style of the Atelier games. So if you liked those and you didn't like the ones I just mentioned for PS3, this is definitely uh, much improved from what I've heard, although I haven't played it yet. And then another unique random game out there. I wouldn't really consider it a classic though, like Valkyria Chronicles or Nier, um, but it's it's definitely a unique game in its own right. So Time and Eternity, it's a pretty unique game, it's like the one of a kind. Uh, the Gilded Fate Paradox, this is like uh, this Disgaea series. This is another strategy style uh, role-playing game with crazy wacky characters. Uh, and then The Witch and the Hundred Knight Another, it's kind of like Odin Sphere. It's kind of hard to explain it. It's another really interesting, one of a kind. Uh, Artonlico, Artonlico Koga. Um, this series originally started on PS2, um, but this is. I think there there is going to be another one. R Sergey, something weird game, that's coming out again later this year. Um, but it's. I guess it's going to be similar to that. I'm not exactly sure though. And then we have the Disgaea games. I don't have that many of them because I'm not a big fan of the Disgaea series. There's mul there's more than what I'm showing here, but there's Disgaea 4. Uh, there was Disgaea 3. That was definitely on PS3, but I don't have it. Uh, and then Disgaea D2 came out, I believe, either late, very late last year or early this year. I don't remember, but I have it. Um, and then Mugen Souls came out. Still haven't played this. It's another... It's like the... Very similar in playstyle to the Disgaea games. And then Mugen Soul Z, which just came out recently, like a few months ago. So that was my collection, my JRPG collection of the uh, PS3 role-playing games. So as you can see, there are, is a whole bunch of them, or there are a whole bunch of them. 
So if you're interested in any of these games, uh, I may do some playthroughs on my Twitch channel. Uh, right now I'm playing Tales of Exilia, and then I'm going to be playing Tales of Exilia 2. I'll like, pick up some of these, probably show some Dark Souls 2. Let's get very close to the end of that game. So if you liked what you saw, if you want to see more content, let me know in the comments. I might do a review on any of these games. So as always guys, if you like the video, please subscribe if you want to see more. And you can always check out my Twitch channel uh, to see these games in action. So thanks for viewing.